Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video and in this one we'll be looking at a 2015 worker placement sort of work with dice worker placement game called the Voyages of Marco Polo and in this one you'll be rolling your dice you'll be placing your, your dice out onto the board to take different actions that will allow you to get victory points and the person with the most victory points at the end of five rounds is the winner fancy that so um yeah if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel hit the, hit the button down there below leave a comment tell us what you do like what you don't like and um yeah, yeah we'll be back after this board games 4k So the Voyages of Marco Polo, so in this one you'll, get, you'll have a pool of five dice initially and you'll be rolling them and you'll be placing them out onto, onto different action spaces on the board. So you, the first action space that you've got is that you can you can collect five coins. So you just put you put any die number out there, you take five coins. So the way the, the way the dice placement works is you've got blue spaces and brown spaces and the blue spaces, multiple people can put their dice on to, stack on top of each other but you have to pay a cost dependent on how many pips that you the die that you place and on the brown spaces only one person can go there per turn so um, yeah so the first action that you can take is you can place your action die onto a take five coin space it could be any number you place it out there and you take five coins the second action you can take is that you can gain, gain the favor of the Khan and what you'll do is that you'll, you'll visit a Khan and you'll ask him what he wants you to do he'll give you one of any resource and two camels and what you do is you put any number of die out but subsequently the people that put their dice out after you have got to put a die that's equal or more valuable than your die so the third action you can do is you can visit the bazaar you can put out one two or three dice the more dice you put out the better the reward and put a one two or three dice out and you look across to the number of the die and you look down and that's what you get so the fourth action that you can take is you can gain contracts and you'll put your dice onto the blue space and then you'll look across and depending on what die you put out you can take one or two contracts of a, of a value that are equal to or lower than the die you put out right and the fourth action you can take is you can take the travel action and what you'll do is that you'll have to put two dice out and you, in this game, you always take the lowest die number. No matter how many dice you put out, you'll always take the lowest number. So you look at the lowest number, you read across, and then you move your little man around the map that many number of spaces. And what will happen is when you move around the map, you'll either stop at a big city or a, large, or a small city. And when you stop at a big city, you'll put your trading post out on the board and you'll take the bonus tile. And then you'll also get access to a, an action card that will give you an extra action that you get the choice of using every turn. And if you go to a small city, you'll get a, a benefit at the beginning of every round. So it's, it's in your interest to get out and about and, um, and get those get those bonuses sooner rather than later because the clock is always ticking so if you get to Beijing if you're the first person to Beijing you get 10 points in the game and you know the later you leave that the less points you get and you can also trade in your excess resources at the end of the game in, in addition to normal actions that before you take your action and the, after you take your action you can take a number of bonus actions and these bonus actions are um, you take three coins from the little purse that's on the board you can give up one camel to re-roll one of your dice you can give up two camels to change the pip up or down one on one of your dice or you can give up three camels to take a black die which gives you an extra action at the beginning of every game you'll be dealt with these two objective cards that will tell you to give you points for putting trading posts out in specific locations and in addition to that you'll also get a, a, a character with an absolutely insanely game breaking ability so um yeah, at the end of five rounds, the you do a bit of final scoring. You get one point for every ten coins you get, and um, whoever's got the most victory points wins. And if there's a tie, then it's whoever's got the most camels in their camel pit, in their camel shed, that wins the game. So yeah, that's how you play Marco Polo. So what do we like about this game? So the first thing we got to mention is it looks absolutely pretty. It's a mix of blue and sort of. Um, yellowy orangey sort of things and it looks absolutely gorgeous you know you're looking at the board and it's beautiful artwork and uh, the box is a bit weird but yeah the uh, artwork's fantastic there's a good mixture of actions you know you've got the you can travel around the map you can visit the marketplace you can you can gain the favor of the Khan and all that sort of stuff so there's a good mixture of actions in the, um, in, in, in this game the dice rolling's always exciting it doesn't really matter how you're doing it but um yeah the fact you're rolling dice and you never know what dice you're going to get and there's also ways to mitigate the the 
random nature of that you know you can always you know, use your camels to change the, the value of your dice so if you, you don't roll what you want then you can always do that and there's also like a catch-up mechanism because if you roll less than 15 you, you can make up with money or camels in that so yeah it, it, it's well worked out in that in that regard the character abilities are deliberately overpowered and i think you know that's what really makes this game and it you know that's what, if, if, if the characters didn't have those special abilities then it, this game would just be another bog standard dry euro but it's not it's got those outlandish characters and those those crazy abilities everybody loves i mean you know like we said in our little um how to play video that we did the other day you know we were saying we we're always envious that you're looking at your ability and you think oh my god that's brilliant but you're looking at somebody else and thinking oh my god i wouldn't mind that one and they're all as good as each other all these abilities are fantastic and there is a, a mini expansion about extra characters that is a must have you must get that if you do have this game so yeah when the game starts there's this expanse of, of different possibilities that you can do and never any shortage of meaningful actions that you can take in this one and uh you know whether it's uh visiting the favor to kind of get that, that that extra resource that you need whether you go for the travel strategy which is quite expensive you know it costs a lot of money to, to do the traveling but you also get those lucrative rewards if you can get your your little marco polo out on the map real early so um yeah there's all these meaningful choices really sort of agonizing choices and you, you, it's one of them games where you want to do everything but you can't do as much as you want to do and that's that's really good we do like the frust it's frustrating but it's in a good way so what don't we like about marco polo so like we said i mean we did say that uh you know, about the travel action that is it's deliberately sort of neutered it make it's deliberately expensive to stop you from grabbing all the bonuses but in on the flip side of that it with the games we played the travel action seems to be a little bit overpriced you know when you when you're trying to move your bloke around the map you're paying like 12 18 coins to just move maybe three or four spaces so um if you've got a character that utilizes that travel that travel action and you get sort of hooked into into that that strategy it's very difficult to move around the map quickly to get those bonuses but again like you know it's, it's deliberate in that respect but it might just be that little bit too frustrating yeah this one i mean it suffers from the same thing we we, talk, we talked about this with fresco and uh various other games that we've reviewed it, it it's one of them games that suffers from that sort of tunneling sort of aspect you know the beginning of the game it presents itself with these broad array of actions all these possibilities and as the game progresses it gradually narrows and you do find yourself sort of scratching around in the dirt to to pick up those points that you may need to push you over the line and it it's, it's that it's really frustrating in that in that respect because you you're looking at all the board and you're thinking well i can't do that i can't do that and if i do that and the, the game now like we said the game narrows towards the end and like games like fresco it sort of suffers from that it sort of boxes itself into a corner and it's it's really frustrating towards the end yeah we've played this numerous times and most games you do end up with a runaway leader well, from our from our experience i mean that might not be the case for you but uh, we we do so it does suffer from the runaway leader not as the games have been played but when you're sort of to totaling up all your points for your contracts and, and your, who, who gets the seven points and who gets to Beijing, you know, you do suffer from one person that is way, way, way ahead. And I don't know if that's something to do with the, the character that you draw that may just suit the way that the random nature of the game plays out. Yeah, that's, that's another frustrating aspect of this one. So in summary, should you buy Marco Polo in 2019? So, yeah. This, I would say yes. I, I would definitely consider this one. You know, because it's got it's got those, that mini expansion with the characters. It's got also got the Venice expansion, which we haven't played, but there's there's that as well. But um, it's the it's the characters' abilities that really do elevate this this game beyond a bog standard Euro. And without those character abilities, I don't think this game would be worth playing today and the fact, the fact that you've got an extra a little mini expansion with extra character abilities the thing that makes that makes this game playable in 2019 is uh that, that's a must have you, you really need to, to pick that up if you do get if you've got this game or if you do end up getting this game yeah it's a it's a unique dice worker placement game it's not really anything like it. i mean we've, i've been thinking about this and the closest thing i can think of is uh pulsar 2849 and i think pulsar 2849 is the better game it's like superseded this one but the thing that if, if pulsar 2849 had 
character abilities if it had those cosmic encounter style character abilities that you could use then this it would blow this one out of the water but that's what keeps this game anchored in relevancy in, in 2019 and um, yeah I think Pulsar 2849 is the better game this is a, this, this is the better looking game and it's the maybe it's the more exciting game I don't know but for strategy and choices and difficult decisions Pulsar 2849 is the closest thing you're going to get to an alternative to this one and I would definitely prefer Pulsar 2849 over this but the only thing that that one's lacking is the beauty of this one this one looks better it's more aesthetically pleasing so yeah i mean the best way to describe this one is a euro with a cosmic encounter characters i mean you know if, if that's your sort of thing if you like euro games and you like overpowered uh, character abilities then this is the game for you so um yeah we'd say that in 2019 it's dated a little bit you know there's games starting to emerge that have, that have overtaken this one that are worth playing but this one's still good you know if you can pick it up cheap it's worth playing and um yeah that's voyages of marco polo so as we said at the beginning if you if you're new here and you want to see more of this stuff then hit the subscribe button down below leave a comment and we will see you next time